Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 13th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got an interesting uh, diary by uh, Russ from Friday, and it's about trying to predict how likely a vulnerability is being exploited. First came up with a model, they call it the EPSS model, or the exploit prediction scoring system and made an API available that allows you to look up the EPSS score for various vulnerabilities based on their CVE. Now we do have the CVSS score. That score does indicate how severe a vulnerability is, but of course does not necessarily predict if a vulnerability will actually be exploited. And a real severe vulnerability you may care less about if it's not going to get exploited. And that's always sort of a hard thing to sort of figure out. Well, first here came up with a model that they consider somewhat valid in order to predict how likely a vulnerability will be exploited in the next 30 days. Now, to make it easier to interact with the API that first offers Russ and now created a little utility EPSS call that will allow you to interact with that API and then retrieve the score based on date. So you also can change how it changes over date. The two numbers that are typically being provided here by first are first the EPSS score itself and then also a per percentile, meaning how many uh, vulnerabilities or the percentage of vulnerabilities that have a score of whatever the score of the vulnerability is and lower. So it's easy uh, to see what sort of your top ranking vulnerabilities are based on their likelihood of being actually exploited. Certainly an interesting and important project. So uh, take a look and uh, let me know, let Russ know uh, sort of how these tools work, how these EPSS scores uh, work out for you. And we got a lot of articles uh, this weekend about a Pac-Man attack. Uh, this attack uh, does affect the M1 processor, so Apple's uh, processor, and it does allow an attacker to essentially escalate uh, privileges. The technique was developed uh, by researchers at MIT and now there has been some pushback as to how realistic uh, this attack is. Again, it's a privilege escalation vulnerability, first of all. So an attacker already needs to be able to run a code on the system. Initial reports suggested and that's sort of based on how it was demonstrated in the paper that an attacker would first need to load a kernel extension, which of course already requires a privilege escalation. However, that appears to be not necessary in order to conduct the attack, was just used here to demonstrate the attack according to a response by the authors. Also, Will Dorman on Twitter noted that uh, the paper suggests that the attack requires a high resolution uh, timer, which is not actually sort of available uh, by default uh, for the M1 processor. Well, um, We'll, we'll see once the actual source code is being released for the attack and others are able to reproduce it and play with it, how much this attack really matters. It is a hardware attack, so there isn't really much you can do about it at this point. Maybe Apple will come up with some kind of firmware workaround. We have seen this for similar attacks in Intel CPUs. And based on this pack, this pointer authentication really only being used uh, in M1 CPUs. This shouldn't affect any other CPUs, but of course some of the basic techniques, the side channels that are being used here may be applicable to other attacks as well. So in short, nothing you really should be worrying about too much at this point. Now, something you should be worrying about if you are responsible for a facility that uses the carrier Lenel S2 HID Mercury access panels is a set of vulnerabilities that were released that lead all the way to unauthenticated remote code execution, so a CVSS score of 10.0. Exploiting any of the vulnerabilities uh, discovered uh, by researchers with uh, Tralix would allow you to, well, uh, do what you could do with 
remote code execution in a door access system, which means open and lock doors, evade logging, evade notification. So all the good things that uh, you could basically imagine by circumventing a tool like this. This is an enterprise system. So this is nothing that you typically would find like in a home system uh, sort of for uh, your front door locks and such that is not one of those uh, c-wave uh, bluetooth or whatever uh, systems but really more sort of one of those hardwired access panels that you often see in large organizations and then just quickly we got yet another malicious uh, PyPy uh, module actually probably not intentionally malicious in this case these modules that are affected here, most notably Keep and PyAngst DNS API REST Py, these modules include a request module instead of the requests module with S at the end. The one without S turns out to be malicious and steal passwords. So double check and I'll link to the respective article so you'll get the exact spellings and version numbers.